There's much more to do, and, and sadly, the economic toll that's with us is going to be with us for a while. There's no question about that. Yesterday, the federal government announced that there were over 80,000 new claims on the traditional unemployment system that were filed in Massachusetts. That number of new claims is smaller than what we've seen in previous weeks, which suggests that many people who've been hit by COVID-19 have already filed initial claims in previous weeks. But no mistake, make no mistake, that's still a huge number. If you go back to sort of the months of January and February, we would typically see somewhere between seven and 10,000 new claims in a week. To have, a, um, to have numbers like the ones we continue to have here are unprecedented and speak in very big, loud, and significant terms about how big a deal uh, this economic downturn is here in the Commonwealth uh, for people who are dealing with the loss of a job. Um, in total, over 650,000 new claims have been filed since March 15th. Um, we've worked pretty hard through that system, and over the course of this time, we're currently paying approximately 400,000 people, and obviously are working through uh, the rest of the, the group that's currently in process. That 400,000 people is a really big number, um, four times the size of the number of people who are collecting unemployment benefits in the month of February. And obviously, we're grateful that we've been able to process those claims on behalf of those people who lost their jobs through no fault of their own. Those people are also receiving that extra $600 a week on top of their regular benefits, which was also part of the Federal CARES Act. But we know we have a lot more to do. Um, this is an incredibly difficult time for many people, and we're working really hard to do all we can to make sure people get access to the benefits they're entitled to. Um, we've talked before about the fact that we had 50 people working in a call center in the month of February at the Department of Unemployment Assistance. We now have almost 1,000 people working remotely, both taking calls and also calling people back. They're up to doing about 20,000 individual calls a day to people to help them work through their applications. And they continue at DUA to host daily unemployment town halls that are held in both English and Spanish and have been attended by nearly 200,000 people at this point in time. There's no doubt that the steps we've taken so far to deal with the coronavirus and to stop the spread have had significant economic dislocation uh, for hundreds of thousands of people here in Massachusetts. We're very cognizant of that fact, and that's why so much work has gone in to making sure that we can make the unemployment system serve the people it's intended to serve. I do want to thank all of the folks on the public service side who are working on so many different fronts, um, whether they work in transportation, in human services, at the Department of Unemployment Assistance, at Consumer Affairs, at Business Regulation, at DEP, in our parks. These are all the folks who are showing up every day to work on your behalf and to make sure that we continue to do the things people expect us to do here in Massachusetts during this very difficult time. I want to close with this. We're, we're at the end of what I think everybody would say is another difficult week in managing our way through the surge. And yesterday marked one month since we issued our original emergency order to close non-essential businesses. I know for a lot of people it's felt like it's been a lot longer than that. Um, and I sure, I'm sure that's true uh, for many of the folks who've been in the middle of it from the beginning. And I know that everybody would love to see that it's over. But here we are still in this surge and we need to recognize that this insidious and often invisible virus is still making people here in Massachusetts very sick. We need people to continue to do their part, and they need to do it not just for themselves and their families and their neighbors. They need to do it for all those essential workers I was just talking about, all those public servants and first responders, and all those people in healthcare who are working really hard to try and make sure that the people who get sick get better. Um, for everybody involved in this, we get that there are tough times, but we also know uh, that while there are many tough times ahead, we have people here who know how to play the game and will stick with it all the way through to the end. And I do want to say that one of the things that helps keep us going right now is the spirit and resilience and the stories that we hear every single day about what's being done by our residents here in Massachusetts to help one another. 
The stories are terrific. They're hard to hear because they come with, um, they come because of and with uh, a response to a very difficult situation that many people find themselves in. And people are making sacrifices in many cases to help others manage their way through some wildly difficult times. But the stories can also be uplifting. And parents sharing profound examples of high schoolers, for example, who despite having their senior year cut short, are taking up jobs at their local supermarket so that they can help out in their community. I talked the other day about a woman who received gloves and masks from friends so that her spouse who has cancer would be able to wear those when he goes to get his cancer treatments. Businesses are stepping up to transform their manufacturing operations and help produce the medical equipment right here in Massachusetts that our first responders and healthcare workers need, often doing that at enormous cost to their own operations. And we also see little glimmers of hope all around us. And I hope that all of us will use that as part of the fuel that we all need to not only get through the surge, but get to the other side and start to think about what the next act here in Massachusetts will look like. I want to thank the people of the Commonwealth for all their continued work that they do to maintain that separation, to keep distance, to stop the spread, and frankly, to step up with all of us to make sure that we get through this surge and can start to think about and talk about what the next act will look like here in the Commonwealth.